it comes to Christmas cake, you might think of a fruit cake, but in Japan, it's a slightly different type of fruit cake. If this is your first time to the channel, I'm Cassie and welcome to my kitchen in the suburbs of Japan. And today we're going to make a Japanese Christmas cake. This is also known as an Ichigo no Shoto Keiki or a strawberry shortcake. If like me you're used to western dense fruit cakes, this is very different. This is a shortcake, which means that it is a light and fluffy sponge. And because it's a strawberry shortcake, it has a whipped cream topping and of course strawberries. I do have a lot of tips to share with you guys today, but they are very specific to each step of the cake making process, so I'll just be telling you them as we go along. But with all that said, let's take a look at what ingredients we'll need to make our Japanese Christmas cake. We're going to need the standard ingredients for any cake, which is butter, sugar, flour, and eggs. But we're also going to be making a brandy syrup and a whipped cream topping. And we'll of course be decorating it with some lovely strawberries. Interestingly enough, Japan at this time of year starts selling strawberries again specifically for this Christmas cake. So let's get to it. So first up, we're just going to prepare our cake tin. To do this, I'm going to use baking paper and I'm going to make the sides a little bit taller than the actual baking tin itself. Then in an attempt to make this easier to use later, I'm going to roll this up with an elastic band. And then just use the base of the cake tin as a template to draw a circle. Before you start mixing, make sure that you preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to whisk the eggs and sugar. In a lot of Japanese recipes for strawberry shortcake, they will say to do this over a bowl of warm water. This is because it will make it a lot quicker and easier to whisk the eggs. However, if you do it with cold eggs, then it will make the end product a lot springier and much more like a sponge. So you can just add in all of the sugar at once and whisk this until it is light in colour but thick and smooth. When you whisk on high speed, it will first become very frothy and then it will start to get smoother and thicker. This is a bit like making a meringue. And it will take about four minutes to get it to this stage where it's kind of thick and leaving a trail behind it. Once you've got it to this stage, then with a hand mixer or with your mixer on a very low speed, give it one last mix. This will make the bubbles more even. We've just spent all that time adding air into this batter, so we don't want to ruin that. So you're going to use a rubber spatula to fold in this flour. Go from the inside out, and this way you will have minimal bubble bursting and minimal gluten hardening. These are all things that will help to make this cake light and fluffy. But once you're pretty sure that you've incorporated all of the flour, then don't keep going because you don't want to start hardening that gluten. And once the flour is all incorporated, we're going to add our butter. But wait, we're not just going to add the butter as it is. Especially because this is going to go into the fridge later, we want to make sure that the cake is as moist as possible. So we're going to add a little bit of oil to our butter. Do this in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Do keep a very close eye on it because the oil will make it start to splatter. If you're worried, put it in on a lower temperature for a slightly longer time. Or put your butter and oil in a container over a pot of hot water. So now we're going to pour that butter and oil into our mixture and I do this by putting it over the spatula. This way it will kind of stay on the top rather than sinking to the bottom. If it sinks to the bottom then it's very hard to incorporate without over mixing. That's our cake batter done so let's pour this into our pre-lined tin. Now it's already in our tin, we can put this into our preheated oven for 25 minutes. Do remember that every oven is different, especially in comparison to my little Japanese oven. So it might take a little bit less time or a little bit more time depending. And at this size, I would say that it's probably not going to go anywhere under 23 minutes or over half an hour. Okay, it's been 25 minutes and I'm very excited, so let's see if this cake is done. 
I'm going to use a toothpick to check if the cake is done. And if you insert a toothpick into the cake and it comes out clean, it is done. If there's some batter stuck to the toothpick, then put it back in the oven. And this part is very important. We're going to bash the cake on the countertop. Let out all your anger, just bash it straight on the table and let out all that hot air. This will hopefully stop your cake from deflating, which would be very sad. And then I'm going to turn this upside down and we're going to leave it for an hour at room temperature before putting it into the fridge. Because normally the bottom of the cake is very, very heavy, so we're going to put that on the top and try to even it out. This also means that the dome shape that has been created in the oven is going to even out and we'll have a nice flat cake. Then once the cake has been waiting around for an hour, then we can put it into the fridge. So now that our cake has been resting in the fridge, we're going to cut off the top and cut it in half. And now we're going to move on to the decorations. Because we want to keep our cream as cold as possible for as long as possible, we're going to do the strawberries and syrup first. The syrup is incredibly easy. All we have to do is combine our sugar, hot water and brandy and give it a mix. Then for the strawberries, I like to check how many I'm thinking I'm going to use. So I just sort of compare the size to the cake itself and then I cut off just the tops. And now we're going to move on to the cream. And something that is so, so important for the cream is to keep it over ice water. One time I tried to whip up cream without any ice water in the middle of summer and it started to whip but it didn't really whip all the way and then I was really confused as to why it wasn't going far enough and basically what was happening was it was starting to separate and you can't actually properly whip up cream when it's warm. So you use cream that is straight out of the fridge and put it over a bowl of ice water. Remember this, do this, don't skip it. So in that bowl of ice water, we're going to combine our cream, sugar and vanilla. We're actually making a creme chantilly or a chantilly cream, which is a type of French cream. This literally just means a flavored cream, but it's really good on hot chocolate, so I would definitely recommend that. So we're going to beat this until it forms medium peaks. And this will take about seven minutes. Once you've got it to a stage where when you take out the whisk, then a peak like this forms on the cream and the cream still sticks to your whisk, then you're done. So because I want to keep this as cold as possible, I'm going to put some aside and put this in a piping bag in the fridge. Just before you start decorating, then use a hand whisk to make some slightly stiffer cream on one side of your bowl. This sounds a bit weird, but basically what we're going to do is use the stiffer cream as a base coat and then go over the top with the softer cream. So now we're going to actually decorate the cake. So take your first layer of cake and brush on that syrup. And this brandy flavor will just give it a slightly Christmassy accent. But the brandy is of course optional. Or if you want it to taste even more of brandy, you can add a little bit more into the syrup. Then we're going to cover it with cream and strawberries. When you put on the strawberries, you want to put them right to the edge of the cake to avoid the top layer from drooping. But you kind of want to avoid putting one right in the middle because then it's quite hard to cut. I don't have a cake turntable or a cake lazy Susan, so I'm just using two plates so that I can spin it without it moving about. Once you put the strawberries on, then put another layer of whipped cream over the top and scrape it so that you can just see those strawberries peeking out. Then add your other cake layer. Then we're going to use that firmer cream and go around that little gap that's created by the strawberries in the middle. Then we're going to add some of this Chantilly cream onto the top. So now we're going to go back over it with our softer cream.
This is a little bit tricky, but try to keep your spatula in place whilst you turn the plate. That way we'll get a nice straight side. And to get a nice flat top, we're going to go from the outside inwards. Pulling that spatula towards you and then cleaning it between every time. This will get you the closest to perfection that you can with this whipped cream. Once that's all done, we can finally add our strawberries and pipe on some little decorations. So that has taken a lot of concentration, so let's put it next to some Christmassy decorations and admire its snowy white beauty. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is not the easiest cake to decorate. The whipped cream is unforgiving and shows any imperfections quite clearly. I am learning along with you guys, but I do think that it did turn out pretty well. And of course, one of the main ways to judge that is in the taste. And when you cut through this, you get that beautiful cross section of the strawberry there. This is a light and fluffy cake with a wonderfully creamy and sweet topping. And I would have absolutely no problem eating this on Christmas day. That's it for today. So I'll see you next Sunday. I forgot to talk about the butter.